was not quite as funny as I was expecting. Guess what time it is? Story time! I don't know where I was going with that. Hang on one second. I'm really hungry. I'm back! So while I'm getting my food at Subway, this sandwich, this beautiful sandwich, a steak with American cheese, spinach, tomato, jalapenos, and lots of love. I'm standing in line and there's this old guy in front of me, super cool old guy by the way, sweet glasses, not the old kind, but like the new old kind where they're new glasses and you can tell he just bought them but they're made to look old. Um, which somehow makes them cool. I had like a purple iPhone case with a turquoise headphone cord. Like who does that? Especially of an older generation who has a purple iPhone case and a turquoise headphone cord. So we're standing in line, he's in front of me. He's ordering his food while he finishes telling her what he wants. And she turns to me and says, and for you, and he's thinking, she said, is that all for you, I would assume. So he answers, and then realizes that she was talking to me, but like tries to play it off. I hate it when that happens too, old guy. It happens to the best of us, like when you're trying to say goodbye to somebody, and for some reason you say you're welcome. Like, why did I say that? Why did those words come out of my mouth? totally made that. Not that you'll be able to tell. Guys, it's time for a story. It's been a long time since I put out my last story time and I had meant to put one out earlier than this. Got super busy, but also uh, I had a huge problem with trying to pick something to tell a story about because I had a couple of like really good ones. I still have some really good ones and it'll probably come out later down the road, but it just didn't seem like the right one. I, I couldn't figure out which one I wanted to do. And finally, something happened that is crazy. And I feel like this is gonna make a really good story time. But what I was gonna tell you, um, one of them involved a crazy man in a trench coat. And another one involved a dog and some dark matter. We'll get to those later. Here we go. I actually really just <laughs> my hand right there. A couple days ago, it's after work. Me and my brother are leaving lunch with uh, a couple of other people and, and having a, it's like a meeting lunch thing. I don't know what you call those things. Luncheon. It's a luncheon. Meeting a luncheon. We're leaving lunch and all of those people. And he was going to go and look at a pair of shoes, so I went with him. Then he's going to go to Starbucks. He has a meeting at Starbucks later with one of uh, the kids from our youth group. So we go to the Washington Street one. Now it's important that I say Washington Street one. We sit down to hang out for a couple minutes before his uh, appointment gets there. And once his appointment gets there, I'm gonna head out because I don't wanna make things weird because I mean, it's his meeting and then I'm just there third wheeling. And we are getting our coffee. I see his appointment is, is arriving. So I'm heading out the door, they're coming in. I wave hi to them. The guy there is, I've actually seen him before and talked to him before. I think his name was John. John, if you're watching this, please forgive me if that's not your name, but I'm going to call you John for the remainder of this video. Uh, John is a cool guy. He just started working there uh, for a couple days. John's out there by his truck. I'm like, hey man, cool truck, and we start talking or whatever, and he's talking about hunting, and he's actually in the Army Reserves, which is also cool. America! I don't know where I was going, but I needed to leave, so I'm hopping in my car, and I see this guy that is approaching John as he's walking in the Starbucks. Um, and I, I don't know why, but I just was like, that's a strange looking person. Let me explain. He's not strange looking. It was more so that he, he didn't like fit in that situation. You know when you're having a dream, like in your everyday life, so let's say you're at work and then there's just like one purple dinosaur and you're like, why is there a purple dinosaur in here? It was kind of like that. I don't know. I just, it, it was off. Here's parking, right? Here's the store. And I'm pulling out like this to go pull out of the exit of the parking lot. And as I back up like this, this guy like slams his hands down. He just was like <laughs> on the back of my car. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Stop! Stop it! Hey! Hey! And he's walking around the side of my car. So I roll down the window. Interesting looking guy. He has like a phone that looks like it belongs to like a five-year-old. Like it's one of those phones. You know when your parents gave you one of those like super old phones and it's like half broken, but you're like still super excited just to have a phone in the first place. And this guy, he's an interesting looking character. He's got clean shaven head, sunglasses, he's got tattoos up his arms, raggedy shirt, jean shorts, like jorts. This guy straight up got jorts on. 
So he walks up to the side of my car and he goes, Hey man, uh, my name's John, man. He goes to shake my hand. I'm like, why is his name John? I just talked to John. This is so interesting that his name's John. But what are the chances? What are the chances? Okay? What are the chance? Because it's not even chance. There aren't multiple chances of this. There's one chance. What are the chance? I just finished talking to John and then John walks up. Interesting. Interesting. My name's John, man. Uh, nice to meet you. And he like reaches out to shake my hand. I'm like, I don't want to shake your hand, man. But I shook his hand. There's like a film. It's just like stranger film. There might not even be anything on your hand, but it feels like there is. But after shaking hands with a stranger, <laughs> nothing will get it off your hand. Hey, man, uh, me and my wife are... Me and my, me and my, here's my wife. I'm meeting his wife. I don't understand this, and I'm shaking her hand. We're about $12 short of a... Tire change, man. We blew a tire. Stranded. We need to get somewhere. We just need 12 bucks, man. We need 12 bucks to make sure that we have enough money to get this tire change. I didn't have any cash on me. And normally, like, I like to help people. I didn't have any cash on me. At all. All I had was my card. Like, hey, man, I, I wish I could help you. I hope you know that, but... I don't have any cash on me at all. I only have my card. There's an ATM right down there. All of a sudden, he's like super agitated. <sighs> There's an ATM right down there behind McDonald's. Right. I'm gonna go to this ATM you just told me about behind McDonald's where there's no one. Put my bank information in. Pull money out for you. Just getting very, very strong. And I went, okay. And like, not like, okay, but like, Okay, the moment I said that, he like runs around the front of my car. I don't even know how he ran that fast. Bam, he's on the other side of my car. And his wife is opening my back door. He has my front, my passenger door open before I could say anything. At that particular time, I had a bunch of electronic equipment and I had it covered over with some clothes just in case somebody was interested in entering my vehicle without a key to obtain said equipment. He's going to get in on my passenger side, sit down and put his feet on that equipment. He's automatically going to move some stuff and look at that equipment. Why are you getting in my car, bro? He opens the door. He's got one foot like sticking in the door. His wife is opening my back door. No. Hey! Hey! You are not getting my car, bro. You are not getting my car. Yeah, yeah, all right, we'll start walking. Pulls his foot out and slams the door of my car. Slams just What the heck just happened? I just floored it out of there. I, first of all, what? Second of all, I don't understand why he didn't get into my car. If he was gonna get in my car, why didn't he get in my car? The only thing that I can think is, number one, God. That's a total God situation. The Holy Spirit put me on alert right off the bat and I didn't feel like something was right. Number two, he didn't want to continue with whatever his plan was because of all of the witnesses. He wanted to meet me at the ATM and pull money out, put all my information in and pull money out with him standing there with me. Who do you think I am that I'm gonna do that? I call my brother when I'm leaving. I'm telling him like what just happened as I'm driving away from these people. That thing in me still wanted to help them. I still wanted to to help him out with the tire. You know, I'm starting to unwind things because everything had happened so fast. And I realized I never told him that I was gonna get him money. I never told him I would meet him at the ATM. I never told him that he could get in my car or that I would take him anywhere. I make a couple loops while I'm trying to decide where to go next because I'm like thinking about all this. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I call my dad. He drives over there to the Starbucks and he talks to some people there. They are gone. I mean gone. On foot. None of the cars there were, th were theirs. So the story they were telling me was completely bogus. He slammed his hands down on my car and then both of them tried to climb in my car with all of this expensive equipment in my car. And then he wants me to drive him, which of course I stopped that. Then he still gets out and wants to meet me at an ATM and have me use all my bank stuff. This is like a scam that they that carjackers run. And that's the way they run the scam is one person gets here, one person gets in behind the driver and they put the gun to the back of the driver's head and then the person in the passenger seat is the one that handles all the transactions. There's already been a bunch of police reports in Indianapolis of, of people that have pulled over on the side of the road to help somebody with a flat tire and they've been shot, shot and killed over like 20 bucks. My life was in danger and I had no idea. And in the course of minutes, these are minutes, I didn't even know. I wasn't like scared. I'm not like frightened. I'm not anything like that. So without the Holy Spirit putting me on alert, I could be dead or broke because they took all my money. What's even crazier than the fact that that happened is the fact that 
I didn't even realize what was happening until afterwards. I could be dead at the hands of another person. Like I've almost died plenty of times, right? And I'm sure most people have almost died plenty of times. Almost dying at the hands of another person is like totally crazy to think about without the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I don't know what decision I might have made and he might have made it into my car before I had anything to say about it. That like blew my mind. I hope that this puts emphasis on the type of day that we live in right now and the importance of walking in the spirit, the importance of being prayed up, the importance of being connected. You don't know. You literally don't even know what's happening. It's happening so fast. You don't know when you could be moments from death, when you could be right on the verge of being killed or dying. And the Holy Spirit does. So I hope you got something from this video. I guess I'll see you next time.